Hi, my name is Susan. I live in the UK and I'm doing this video for anyone who is looking about the GP doctor to put them on fentanyl lozenges. I've just finished this one. I'm on 200 micrograms. Um, I've been on it for around five plus years, I would say and it's great if you're going to be put on it it's really good but the one thing no one told me about was how much it would damage my teeth so it's got three different types of sugar in them to cover the taste of the medication which is understandable i've had a batch where they didn't put enough sugar in and unfortunately i could taste the medication so i ended up having to put a sweet in my mouth while on the lozenger so um and people have asked me what they taste like and describe the taste and the consistency of which they are and the only way i could describe them was of um double lollies which are compacted sugar um squeezed together in some kind of machine with a lollipop on the end of it so the double lollies are obviously a lot bigger but a fentanyl lozenger itself um, covers about that much because it's this is inserted in it's got um let's see if it will zoom in on it uh, let's see it's got like little all the rivets in so when it's added inside the lozenges because obviously it'll be compacted around something so you can put the lozenger in and they put in edible edible glue so anyway uh, back to if I knew now what I know then I probably have been I probably would have been a lot more hesitant to um take the lozenges i at the beginning i was on one every six hours unfortunately that wasn't enough to get rid of the pain especially during a kidney infection um so i was then up to one every three to four hours of a maximum of six a day so I was constantly just on that having one unfortunately if my pain is really bad um I found obviously when I'm in the hospital and being admitted due to illness but um the nurses have control of my meds which is very difficult for an autistic person like myself to have someone controlling over my meds and I'm used to giving myself one as and when I'm required. So the nurse would cut the wrong end and snap half my lozenger off and be like, there you go. And I'd be like, where's the rest of my lozenger? And I'd be like, I don't know, it must be in the bin now. And I was like, okay, well, I'm asking for another lozenger in, in two and a half hours because half my lozenger is missing. So um, there's a lot of like being careful and then, you know, you wait forever because we need two members of staff just to tape them out. But uh, in January of this year, I was admitted to hospital because my upper three and four molars had a giant abscess. And unfortunately, I had um, the dentist told me because I had an appointment at the hygienist. She went, I'm not even going to touch that. And I was like, someone needs to do something. I went, I was at the doctor's, the dentist, sorry, at the dentist. And... Um, I had about 30 shots in my mouth and I don't like the dentist. When I have to have any work done, I have to use the laughing gas because anxiety is not a good friend when you don't like needles in your mouth and, at all. So, um, and they couldn't even remove the teeth. They were like, I'm sorry, I can't even keep doing this, Susan. And I was in an absolute agony. I came out of the dentist. I was crying. I was just fed up. And I'm on a lot of painkillers because I have a lot of health problems. So um, I um, went home, went to bed and hoped for the best. 
uh, didn't get a lot of sleep because I was tired because of the pain. I couldn't lie on this side of my head because my head was hurting because of the pain. And I couldn't lie on that side because any pressure on my face was agonising. So I would lie on my back sitting up because it's the only way I could get comfortable. Um, so um, I went to see the hygienist in the morning. My friend came over and he went, wow, that's a lot bigger overnight. And I was like, yes, yes, it is. So um, I saw Anne, she went, I'm not even going to touch it. She went, however, the dentist has seen and she's got cancellation she needs to see. And I was like, why? No one can do anything about it. And they said, she looked at it. Um, they couldn't even put their finger in. It was agonising. So apparently what had happened was, is the infection was in number three and four upper molars. And my mouth was so big to the point where my eye was pushed up to about here with the swelling um, and um, the um, dentist said I needed to go to hospital so she rang up someone at Sunderland Hospital um, and mentioned my condition that I was in and said you need to go to the hospital now and I was just like I'm not going to the hospital, can't it be at my local hospital? No, so great. Wasn't happy. She gave me a letter. I went, right, I'll go along at some point today. So my friend came back to mine for a bit. We just chilled out. And then um, he went off to work and I went to bed because I was tired. All I wanted to do was sleep because I suffer from, as I say, a lot of conditions. I'll go through them at some point. Um, and... Um, I eventually woke up with this cheek being normal temperature and this one being red hot and had pins and needles in it. And I was just like, oh my God, why? Why me? Because if I hadn't had that infection in my mouth, I would still have my teeth. Yes, they were badly broken and horrible due to the amount of sugar, excuse me, that was in the lozenges my dentist tried me putting on me the highest um toothpaste that there is which is 5000 ppm of fluoride um tried that i'm i've never been brought up to brush my teeth at night um so trying to then put that in on morning and night was very difficult and still is to this day I struggle with a lot of things so I think I'm just uh, I just try my best it's all I can do so I ended up in hospital um I went to e &E, accident and emergency um or ER as Americans call it um and sat and waited I left my wheelchair at home I half wished in the end that I took it with me but unfortunately I didn't um and then um I didn't think I would be admitted to be fair, but by the time I got in, um, I bought a bottle of Oasis fruit juice from the machine and just sipped that and I could feel myself wheezing from um, just trying to breathe and it was starting to restrict my airways. So they were going to do it under local anaesthetic. I couldn't guarantee they could get it out and I turned around when I'm not happy with that so um they said okay fine we'll do it under general anesthetic so you're completely out and um they took out 18 teeth so I have one missing here I have none at the back so I got eight at the front I got one there and one there and I have none anywhere else. And um, after surgery, I was on oxygen for 48 hours because my SATs had dropped below uh, 80%. They were at 88 and for it to be on oxygen, you have to be below 90, I believe, or at least below 95, I think. So um, I went to the dentist today and changed my appointment 
to the 5th of April and I will get tested. Well, I won't get tested. Sorry, that's not true. I will get my mouth molded for partial dentures, meaning that's why they've left the back teeth in. So it'll clamp onto the two back teeth, but I still need teeth to eat. So I've been surviving on pastas and noodles and soft foods or rice pudding, jelly, jello, as Americans call it. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been eating. Um, I have lost weight, or I'll have like an omelette, eggs, just soft, soft, soft food until my gums harden. So the first dentures I'll get um, will be until my gums have completely hardened and um, receded. So it'll just be the, um, bone because you've got to wait for the bone to shrink down as well um and then i think once they start to get a bit slack they'll fit, fit as for my proper one so i am 31 year old and i need dentures but that's fine it doesn't bother us now i've got used to it my friend has a nickname for me of Gummy Bay, which I prefer. My friend in the other room calls me the super, uh, sorry, not super tooth tiger, um, toothless tiger. Not a fan of it, if I'm being honest. But, you know, you have to learn to get on with it, to be fair. But he's a lovely friend and he's not doing it maliciously. It's just a struggle to get the sense of humour sometimes. But yeah, so if you're going on fentanyl lozenges, they're mostly known for people with cancer um, or a lot more chronic pain. I just have it because I have kidney disease and fibromyalgia and a lot of long waste. I'm a very complicated patient. That's what I tell doctors. Um, but my GP and I have discussed it. I'm now on five a day, soon to be moved to four a day, which is very difficult. Cause I'm so used to having so much and the anxiety is there, but it's just a force of habit of putting something in your mouth. So what I usually do is get chubba chubba lollipops or suckers as American call them. Um, and if I'm in pain, I'll suck on that. And if the pain goes away like that, it's psychological pain. If it remains, then I am actually in proper pain, but it's hard to get that balance. But my GP says once I get to about two a day, She'll take this off them completely and put me back on the fentanyl patches because I was on fentanyl patches and the fentanyl lozenges. But these start at 200 micrograms, then they go to 400, 600, 800, 1200 and then 1600. And I don't plan on going back on them at any point in my life unless my health gets to the point way of our medication doesn't work because I'm on a lot of tablets as well and I need them but as I say I'll do another video on that if you want that is not a problem and hopefully I will talk to you soon thanks very much